What does it feel like to get released from prison, you might wonder? Go eat an eighth of mushrooms and then walk into Walmart. So let me go ahead and dress the elephant in the room real quick. I know I'm probably looking a little different since my last video. And if you guys don't follow Joe Does Stuff, my second YouTube channel, which is basically just vlogs, well, it may come as a shock to you that I'm looking a little bit like J J Ron Jeremy. Somebody had actually made a comment. Only the stash. Made a mistake while shaving the other day. Don't ever do what I did. I felt like I was shaving in the dark. I grabbed a blade. It was a half inch blade and I didn't realize that bitch was as short as it was. So hopefully this is going to grow back soon. Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I want to share with you guys kind of a follow up from the last video that I did. Five shocking things that prisoners will experience after prison. And judging by the title of this, you already know that what this is about is habits developed while serving time in prison that are oftentimes hard to break when you come home after serving time. Now this video idea and suggestion comes to us from the comment section and an awesome person by the name of Daniel who says, next video suggestion, top 10 hardest habits to kick after prison and what creates those habits. Daniel, a very awesome suggestion right there. And there was a comment right below yours that I want to throw in this as well from Conan who says, or Conan Lucas who says, how about an anxiety video. When I came home, I found myself relieved, but every time I went outside, I'd have a panic attack. I stayed in my flat for a long time after. Conan and Daniel, very special shout out to the both of you guys, and I'm gonna try to address all of that in this video here today. Now, Daniel, you asked for 10 things. I don't think that I have 10 things. I've probably got like five or six things. And if I forget to mention anything that you guys feel like is a habit that's developed while in prison that's hard to kick afterwards, please comment down below and let us know what you have to say. Without making this intro super long, let's go ahead and die. That was my reaction after damn near shaving my face butt bald naked blah, head first up into this video. When I read this comment from Daniel about habits that are hard to kick after prison, I got to thinking, put the little thinking cap on, and the first thing that came to mind in terms of a hard habit to break, probably in my opinion, the hardest habit to break after prison. What do you think it is? You're right, holy shit, you guessed that. Yes, talking like a prisoner. What's happening everybody? On the job, me and Wayne. Yeah. Yeah, we're working. Well, actually, we're not really working. We're shooting a video, but we're supposed to be working, and that's what that's what counts. So this is what we're doing. We're just sweeping up trash. Can you see that? Yep. That's me shooting. That's Wayne. He's got the broom in his hand. Wayne. Wayne's doing some work. We're doing some work. We're trying to do some work. Yeah, we're trying to do some work. So yeah, that's, what, that's what's going on. We're back out on the job site that I was telling you about yesterday. You know, I don't know necessarily, and that was a very early video when Joe still had the prison accent going pretty heavily. You know, people have made comments and said that when I get around certain people, uh, black folks, that I talk a different type of a way. I, I ran into a guy a while back. I think it was the day that Dave came home from prison, ironically enough. I was just mentioning that in the last video, but I ran into a dude by the name of Junebug. Bug, it wasn't Junebug. You got Junebugs and you got Bugs, uh, two very common prison nicknames. Huh. Can I show this to him right yeah. here, man? That's the crazy. The you think we I did that in the jail right there, guys. Uh, man, that's crazy, man. And the joint still look good, man. Yeah, you think you plug you plug your play ball. <laughs> But anyways, I ran into this dude named Bug that I was in the jail with. And I mean, I immediately, and I've been home from prison for what, like three or four years at that point? Immediately, yo, hey, yeah, you know what I'm saying, though, bug, though, boy, hey, what's up, boy, high five, yeah, we free, though, we free, though, like a free, though, laid chip, yeah, I don't know where that comes from. I don't know if it's a chameleon type of, isn't that a rapper? Whatever happened to that dude? I don't know if it's like a chameleon, 
blending in survival type of a tactic? Why, when you get locked up, you will talk a certain type of a way? Or, or maybe that's more noticeable when you come home from prison? Or maybe it was the way that I spoke for much of my life in my earlier years. You gotta remember, before I went to prison, I wasn't no slouch out there. I was a little pistol starter. Do rag tied, super tight. You couldn't tell Jonah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? No, I'm about to go cop that pack and then attack them streets. Boy, we gotta get that come up. We gotta get that re-up, that come up. We gotta get that stimmy out here. Thinking about it, it just sounds super annoying at this point to talk like a prisoner. Is that what it is? How does a prisoner even talk? Well, you know, when you got a bunch of people combined, it's almost like a, going to a different country. It's almost like going to China. People talk different over there. They talk Chinese. You know, prison is its own little country. You got a bunch of people confined together and dialect is formed. That's what I feel like. And I think to myself, like coming home and talking like a prisoner and trying to fill out a job application alike. Hey, yeah, you know what I'm saying though? Hey, I'm just looking for a fresh start. I don't know what all this hand motion about, but yo, I'm looking for a fresh start just to prove myself. You know where I've been at? Yeah, I'm like an OG. I've been in the field. Well, not really the field. Well, the field at the work center. Picking them watermelons and cantaloupes. I wonder why they ain't even give us no cantaloupe. Hey, yo, would you take a chance on me and hire me? No. Go to the temp service. It just hits differently. Thinking back to it now, talking like a prisoner. I feel like that is a super hard habit to kick. And here's something even more that I want to incorporate with this. Do you know that I really didn't like talking like a prisoner? I wanted to wash away the sins and the, the like an exorcism. I wanted to expunge, expel that devilish shit from my being. Anything related to prison. But Joe, you came home and started after prison show. I wanted to get, I wanted to get the prison lingo so far away from me that... And if my armpits are sweaty right now, I don't even care. I've been working on the flip house. Go check out Joe Does Stuff. Just had a major plumbing issue take place over there. And then another one. There'll be more coming on that soon. We fixed it though. Spoiler. I wanted to stop talking like a prisoner so bad that when I started after prison show and started filming videos, it was probably, you know, two or three years ago where I started talking like a game show host. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to after prison show. You know what? That's a bad analogy. Let's just look at this. What's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show and today is day number six of our 20 day prison story marathon. And in this video, I'm going to tell you about what it's like. Who the, who the, who the f did I think that I was? Pat Sajak? Not many people like that dude. The short of it, talking like a prisoner, definitely a hard habit to break. Moving on, like I said in the beginning of this follow-up to the last video, five shocking things after prison a prisoner is going to experience. Well, I mentioned this, but we need to expound upon this a lot more in this particular video about those habits. Disrespect. Except the reaction to the cause. The cause and react. The, the effect of the cause is what I mean. Because, yo, when you get disrespected out here and you're coming home from prison, somebody bump into you, you're going to be ready to snap. You're going to be ready. Hey, yo, you ain't see me standing here with my icy white Air Force Ones on? You didn't see me? You just smudged my mmm. You just smudged my mmm. You just smudged my mmm. Woo! Why am I going back to jail, though? Why? I just wanted another chance. Yeah, you've seen them haymakers. When I think about that aggression. And I, I've dealt with it. You know, I'm definitely not the best fighter, but still even with that, yo, when that moment occurs, when you get bumped in Home Depot, because somebody trying to get past you to get to that fertilizer, you was going, it don't matter how big the dude, yo, hey, you just bumped into me. There's been a lot of people that, and I don't want to say a lot of people, there's been a, a few people that I've featured here on After Prison Show that I've worked with. You could probably guess who I'm talking about, or maybe you can't. You know, who have definitely dealt with that the aggression that comes from disrespect, somebody bumping into them or saying something that offends them, you know. In prison, you got to handle that. That becomes a habit. Yo, if somebody disrespects you, handle that shit. Hey, take flight on sight. But out here in the real world, take flight on sight if you want to. You're going to be spending the night up in jail. Maybe even more than that. Not getting no bail. Ooh. Or no mail. Uh. Praying for a hail Mary in the courtroom when you go to that bond hearing. But the judge called an audible instead. And now any thoughts of getting out or dead, you better go make your bed because you're going to be locked up instead. Ooh. 
Stop it, Joe. Disrespect and the acts that can follow from that disrespect definitely can be a hard habit to break. I still, you know, from time to time will find myself in that mode. Soon as, hey, soon as that shit happens, I'm ready to put my shoes on. One of the first things that you do when it's time to strap up, when it's time to get ready to uh, take flight on site while locked up. Shout out to Conan, and this next one is in his wheelhouse right here. You know, a hard habit. I don't know if this is a habit or if this is just trauma, but you gotta mention the PTSD, the anxiety, the things that can be developed from the time that you serve, from the constant 24-7 circus and chaotic, it's like being, it's like living in a 7-Eleven. It really is. Like, if somebody ever asked me, Joe, what is prison like? Go take you a sleeping bag and spend a week living in a 7-Eleven. Now, minus the fact that you ain't gonna be, I mean, basically, that's like your commissary right there to shit on the shelves. You never know who gonna walk through that door. Stick-ups and robberies and all that shit take place while you're locked up. But being a product of that environment for so long, you become a product of that environment after being in there for so long is what I probably should say. And it's interesting that while in there, you might not even realize that you're developing these things, this like anxiety or the PTSD. It'll be the after effect like an Adobe program, when you get released and then you're slung back out into society, you have no idea how that's really gonna affect you. Social settings, going out into public, disrespect. You know, Conan had mentioned not leaving his place. The fear, you can become paralyzed with fear. And like, how do you even kick that habit after incarceration? You know, another thing that I should have mentioned in relation to the last one, the disrespect, like how do you even kick that? You know, over time, you I guess it would come from every, let's go back to the disrespect one real quick. From every disrespectful situation where you're ready to take flight on site, yo, you got to <laughs> swallow your pride, step aside from yourself from a moment, for a moment, and say to yourself, yo, if I do anything right now, I'm going back to where I don't want to be at. And you know what? Some people can't do that. But you have to do that. And I feel like with every time that you experience something like that, it kind of like dulls it just a little bit more until, until the point where, you know, it's more common that you won't react ready with the aggression so much as you would at first. And then in terms of the anxiety, like how do you kick that same situation? Every situation that you experience kind of dulls it just a little bit more. Okay, I know I feel like everybody is looking at me. That's either the crack that I just smoked. You better not. It's got to be the fact that my mind's just playing tricks on me. What does it feel like to get released from prison, you might wonder? Go eat an eighth of mushrooms and then walk into Walmart. Except you're not going to be seeing colorful trails. You're going to be having the bad trip instead. My Little Pony's going to be trying to eat your face in there. It's a pretty decent analogy right there. Next on this list might sound a little cliche, but I've got to throw this in here. When you talk about kicking habits after prison, addiction has to be mentioned. It's probably something that was dealt with prior to going to prison that led to you going to prison that oftentimes can still be like embraced while serving time in prison. Like dudes is getting just as high in prison as they are out in the free world sometimes. And if you want it, you're going to get it. Like just because you locked up doesn't mean it's not going to be there. It might be more expensive, but you're going to do what you got to do. Make those phone calls. You got, yo, hey, woo, boy, let me tell you what just happened to me in here. Let me just tell you what happened. Do you got your, do you got your debit card right now? You know, you don't got the debit card. What about the credit one? Oh my God, mom. I make that joke, but I don't want to make any more jokes in regards to the addiction aspect. Yo, addiction is something that so many people struggle with and you know, I've oftentimes thought that, yo, like for some people, maybe it's prison that they need in an effort to kick the addiction. I know that sounds bad, but think about somebody who ain't never been in trouble. I got these type of people in my family and I wish that they could just find the help that they need because, you know, they suffer from addiction and they've never been locked up. And sometimes I think to myself, I'm like, yo, your, 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 your ass needs to get locked up. Maybe that's what it is. But for somebody who's suffered from addiction and has been to prison maybe multiple times and they still come home and, and mess up, well, maybe they need a program. And you know, when I think about like my family in particular and the many different programs and treatments that they've been through that haven't worked, you know, the sad reality is, is that's a situation that can not just be developed in prison, it can be enhanced in prison. And how do you kick that? I mean, you just got to stop. 
I know that sounds so much easier said than done, and I know that I've said that a million times, but what else can you do? Get treatment? Uh, what do they call it? Uh, maintenance. Get, get on the maintenance? For some, that works. I know some that that has definitely worked for. The Suboxone. But addiction had to be on this list. Moving on to one that might seem a little crazy at first. Uh, it's going to sound very abrasive. It's going to be harsh like, like some road rash right here. But I got to throw this in here. Yo, laziness. Being lazy. You can develop this habit while in prison so easily. You know, yes, you're going to want to go to wreck and you're going to hope that you get wreck. And some places might give you wreck multiple times a day. Some places you might be lucky if you get wreck once a week. So what are you going to be doing in the downtime in between? Well, you're going to have a lot of that. And you're going to probably spend a lot of that time laying on your back, eating some snacks, watching a program with the famous Amos pack right next to you. Ooh, them little chocolate chip cookies, though, the famous Amos. Mm. Being lazy. And I know that there's people who work out compulsively. And they can be lazy, too. Just because you come home looking like Brock Lesnar don't mean that you ain't going to be lazy. Because let me throw this next part into this. Because you know I always got that curveball. If you've ever been locked up, you probably can relate to this. But if you have, you know, think about getting released. You come home and you're ripping and running on that first day. You're getting car sick, motion sickness. Like, everything is a blur. Your ass is asleep by, like, 5 o'clock in the evening. And that might take you a little while to get used to. The laziness might not even be the right way to address it. It's like, well, I actually got that listed in my notes right here. It's like getting back into the real world schedule. You know, in prison, you might stay up all night. Well, Joe, you could stay up all night out here in the real world working an overnight job. And that's true. But not everybody's going to be doing that. You know, you got a totally different schedule and program that you've been programmed to that can become a habit, that, you know, a program could be a habit, that you got to try to break getting back out here, getting up bright and early, getting ready to carry your ass to work. And yeah, in prison, some places, a lot of places won't even let you sleep all day, but that don't mean that your ass is going out there and busting your ass for 8 to 10 to 12 hours a day. So when I say laziness, don't take that the wrong way. It is what it can be referred to as, but it can, I guess, more importantly be referred to as just getting back into the routine of things. You've got this prison habit of a, you know, a schedule that is nothing like what it's going to be like out here in society. And I think back to the many times that I got released. Yo, it was like 5 o'clock in the evening, my tired ass is asleep. <sighs> Hey, 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 is it Trey's? I mean, breakfast time. Is it breakfast time? It's 11 o'clock at night. Shit, I'm fully rested. There's one final thing that I want to mention on this list, and I guess that there's a, a lot of other little things that we could have mentioned, such as like, you know, you think about a habit that's hard to break coming home from prison. Uh, tying the sheet up to use the bathroom, cutting your hair with a razor blade and a comb, smashing a ramen noodle soup on the floor, referring to going outside like getting some wreck. You know, there's a bunch of those little things. I was trying to go with the bigger, more important things in this. And the final thing that I want to wrap this up with, working for next to nothing. It can be a habit that can be developed in prison. And think about this. Does prison pay you so piss poorly 12 15, 17, 22, 27, 32, 35, 45 cents an hour to prepare you for coming home from prison to work for minimum wage? Because if you think about $9.50 an hour, what they just raised, they literally, May the 1st, they just raised minimum, or May something, the 3rd, maybe today, they just raised minimum wage in this state from $7.25 an hour to $9.50. Can you imagine coming home from prison making $7.25 an hour when you was making $0.35 cents an hour? Holy shit, I'm rich! Boy, you know how many oodle and noodle and cup of noodles I could buy with that? And you know, you are so used to working for nothing that you get a low wage that can oftentimes drag you because where else are you going to go? You got a criminal record. You know that. Your employer knows that. You ain't going nowhere. Dig that ditch. Work that concrete pouring job. But you don't have to do that. You know what I mean? Like prison will almost like, you know, turn you into a hermit. Like almost make you scared to venture outside of the norm. It almost becomes a norm. Like you can almost relate like a person with a felony to work in a construction job. But that doesn't have to be the case. You know, the president of the United States just visited right here where I live at. I mean, Portsmouth, Virginia. He visited here yesterday and was literally less than a mile away from where I was working on the flip house. Seeing the Coast Guard helicopter circling around. Shit was wild. 
You couldn't go nowhere. I had to dookie real bad. I was trying to get home from the flip house and the state police had the interstate blocked off. Not all lanes, just the two lanes, one of which I was in, just so he could try to catch a selfie of the, 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 the convoy going by. And he didn't. And I damn near shit on myself. But anyways, part of his reason for visiting was he wants to make community college free for everybody. Two years of community college free. And what he came and visited was a community college here, less than a mile away from the flip house. And he was looking at the HVAC class, which is an amazing trade that a person with a felony could get, you know, or a, a really good trade. So you got to break out of the cycle, like of feeling like, okay, just I've been to prison. Yo, ain't nobody gonna really take a chance on me. You know, some people, the audacity of some people, thinking they worth a whole lot more than what they really are, shot to everybody. But if you think about like the guy that I got working with me at this point, most reliable number one, who's been with me for about four months now, you know, I pay that guy $120 a day for eight hours of work. That's $15 an hour. And he busts his ass. And on days when I can pay him more, like for example, we just did a huge landscape job, I was able to give him $200 for the day. And we didn't even work maybe eight hours that day. The point of the matter is, is don't ever sell yourself short and, you know, prison can develop that habit in you that makes you feel like you're only worth so much. When I came home from prison, Little Caesars and the temp service, $7.25 an hour, that was Gucci. I was good with that because I felt like that's all I was worth. How did I break that habit? I worked my ass off to try to always do more. And now, shit, I won't work for less than $100. I'm kidding. <laughs> hey, look, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment on this, letting me know exactly what you thought about this, and as always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world, never take a moment for granted, and make the most of every day. Peace!